Now, Ukraine says Russian forces have launched new missile strikes on coastal towns in the southern regions of Odessa and Mykolaiv. Now, Kyiv has released footage of what it says is the aftermath of the attack, which hit several buildings along with port infrastructure on the Black Sea coast. Russia attacked Odessa's port at the weekend, casting doubt on Friday's breakthrough deal to resume grain exports to the world. And Ukraine's military says it's used advanced U.S. weapon systems to strike more than 50 Russian military targets in recent weeks. It credits the multiple rocket launching trucks known as HIMARS with helping to destroy ammunition depots and bridges in Russian-held territory. Ukraine has only a handful of these vehicles with more on the way, but they've also become targets for Russian attacks. This is HIMARS, a high-mobility artillery rocket system the crown jewel in Ukraine's growing arsenal of US-made weapons. And this is what it can do. The HIMARS can pull up in the middle of a road and fire off multiple rockets very quickly. And they're precision guided, so they can accurately target Russian munitions, combat centers and more. The HIMARS is basically a truck carrying a pod containing six missiles. It can be reloaded in three to five minutes. Most artillery is mounted on slower moving treaded vehicles or towed by trucks. But a HIMARS can get away quickly once it's fired off its payload. Or, as the military term goes, it can shoot and scoot. Its missiles have a range of 80 kilometers, far more than most Russian artillery. This means the Russians must move their sensitive targets, like ammunition depots, further from the front lines. This makes it harder to supply its combat units. Analysts say this is the game-changing part of HIMARS. Ukraine says its rockets have destroyed at least 30 logistics hubs and ammunition depots. Russia says it has destroyed at least two of the HIMARS trucks, a claim the US denies. But Ukraine's ability to use them effectively will also mean hiding these precious systems well. Keeping them supplied with ammunition is up to the West. Let's see what sort of difference uh, these weapons are making with Mark Montgomery. Uh, he's uh, the senior director of the Center on Cyber and Technology Innovation at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Welcome to DW. What, what do you think? Uh, have these HIMARS changed the game or is it too soon to tell? Well, thank you for having me. And, and I do think the HIMARS and the guided missile launcher rocket system are Gimler's munitions that fly the 50... Uh, miles or 80 kilometers uh, that they launch have made a significant difference because what they're allowing the Ukrainians to do is hold Russian logistics and command and control at risk in, in a way that they couldn't with the M177 howitzers with traditional 155 millimeter rounds. So they have made a significant difference. They're affecting the Russians and that's why the Russians are attempting to target them. Right. And it, it's interesting that, 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 that you've just said, and we said in, in the report, this, this, this concentration on the stretching of Russian uh, logistics lines, because we saw at the start of this war that that, that that was a problem for Moscow. That's right. When they were trying to fight around Kiev, they were on extended lines and they failed. So in this new campaign they have fighting broadly, uh, generally from Russia into the Donbass, they, they would appear to have shorter logistics and command and control lines, which are easier for them to control, and they can be more successful. But what, with these munitions, those can even those compact uh, lines of communication can be held at risk and, and create problems for the Russians. So I really do think this is a, well, you know, game changer is a tough term. This significantly sways things in the Ukrainian advantage if they have enough rounds. And more of these HIMARS are expected to be delivered, is that right? That's right. So we've just announced four more of the uh, HIMARS vehicles. And there's equivalent vehicles, the M270s, coming from European countries. So they'll have upwards of, you know, two dozen of these vehicles eventually. But again, as I said a moment ago, the key mm. is the munitions. We have only heard, they're very discreet about the amount of munitions that are being given here, as opposed to the one 155 millimeter where we say we've delivered 411,000 or something. We, we say things like hundreds. And so I am concerned about this. I wanna make sure that we're getting enough. It's, I think it's critical that we get significant Gimler's munitions into Ukraine for use on the HIMARS vehicles.
The, that, that discretion is an interesting point because, uh, uh, again, in the early months uh, of this, this war, that we were seeing a government spokespeople uh, taking to the, the media saying we're going to be uh, delivering this many of this sort of, uh, of uh, weapon and this many of this sort of uh, a weapon. And one, at the time, you couldn't help looking at that and thinking, well, should you really be telling the world about your plans? So I think, you know, when they're in broad numbers, like 59 million, you know, uh, rifle rounds or 411,000 artillery rounds, you're probably okay. I mean, you're not creating a unique thing to attack. In the very small numbers, like say the NASAMs, uh, the, the National Air to Surface, you know, Surface to Air Missile Systems, or the Harpoon missiles uh, coming from Denmark and then eventually from the United States, you probably want to be very cautious about the numbers you tell. I think in the high Mars, because it's successful, we're comfortable saying the numbers. I think the rounds issue has more to do with we know that these are troubling to uh, President Putin and his, you know, leadership group because, you know, they could almost reach into Russia. Right. And uh, that's, that's, I hope, a bridge the Ukrainians don't cross with this weapon system. Take full advantage of it to destroy the Russian occupiers in the Donbass. Okay. Um I'd like to read you a, a tweet from uh, Lithuania's uh, Foreign Minister Gabrielas uh, Landsbergis. Um, uh, he tweeted this uh, a couple of days ago. He said, the agreement to unblock Odessa would have been impossible without HIMARS. It's now very clear that the war will end if we arm Ukraine uh, faster. I, I wonder, Mark, Mark Montgomery, uh, did Ukraine, do you think Ukraine bombed Russia back to the negotiating table? Seems quite like, like quite a, a, a big claim, that. I, 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 you know, I'm not sure you can you can add that two and two together and get five, right? I mean, that's a that's a tough that, that's a tough linkage. What I would say is, the high Mars, um, the uh, the Gimler's rounds, the the counter battery fire radars that allow us to hit the artillery, uh, the harpoon missiles, all these things are leveling the playing field for the Ukrainians so that their own resilience which is the real backbone of this defense, you know, can, can evidence itself to the Russian leadership. So I don't think any single weapon system does it. Um, and, and I'm not sure what the mathematics were in President Putin's head for opening Odessa. And clearly that mathematics reversed and he closed it and opened it and closed it over the last few days with his attacks, uh, missile attacks on the Odessa port. Uh, so I wouldn't give it to, I'm not 100% sure the Lithuanian foreign minister, uh, you know, can, can be validated on that. All right. That's all very clear. Thank you so much for uh, elucid elucidating that and spending uh, the, the time with us. Mark Montgomery from the Foundation for the Defence of Democracies, thank you. Thank you. DW's Matthias Berlinger joins us from Kyiv for more. Matthias, what's the situation in the Odessa region after those missile attacks? So Odessa has been hit several times in the in the past few days, Odessa and the neighboring Mykolaiv, and this is a clear sign that Russia has not given up on these regions. If you uh, remember in uh, February and, and early March, uh, Russia was able to capture some large parts of the south, but they were stopped in Mykolaiv uh, on their march onto Odessa, and as uh, fighting seems to have been stalled in the east, um, they seem to renew their claims on these two cities. However, it's doubtful that they can really advance in that direction as an Ukrainian counteroffensive is going on. So this is uh, the message they are sending. And of course, it has to do with the grain deal, the, the uh, not this strike, but the strike that was just a few days earlier hit a port in Odessa. And this one was aimed at critical infrastructure. So um, definitely there is tension there now and um, worries in the region that uh, there might be other more strikes fo uh, might be following. And, and, and strikes that could um, mean that these grain shipments don't go ahead? They could. They could. It's hard to say. Ukraine is still preparing for these shipments um, and is still determined to reopen these three ports under this very special agreement that will allow for these grains, grains to be shipped out by Turkish vessels, that will, by Turkish-owned vessels that will uh, have a safe passage uh, into Ukraine, uh, into these Ukrainian ports, the passage being guaranteed by the Russians who have said that they would not attack these uh, vessels and uh, the Ukraine 
Ukrainians who would open uh, a lane through the, through the sea, a lane that is without mines. Um, and uh, the hope is, of course, that Russia would not dare to attack Turkish vessels. But the, the, the weak point is, of course, the supply lines behind the ports. Theoretically, Russia has excluded attacking port, uh, ports in this agreement. Um, but um, trust, of course, in Russia's action is not very high. So the preparations are going on, but whether it will happen or not, we will know only after. And Matthias, we've also heard uh, again that Russia is ready to hold talks with Ukraine on ending the war, uh, according to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. How is that uh, being seen in Ukraine? Well, there are a few reactions to what Mr. Lavrov says here in Ukraine, just because people do not take him seriously anymore. A few days ago, just a few days ago, he has said that uh, negotiations would be impossible uh, and uh, are excluded. Now he's saying that they might be possible, but he's blaming the West on them before he has been blaming Ukraine on them. So um, this messaging by Mr. Lavrov in, here in Ukraine, it's seen as a messaging to the West, trying to find the weak spots of the West, maybe uh, these people people who still dream about negotiations, about an end to a quick end to the war via diplomatic path, or who still write open letters or editorials in the West. But uh, clearly nobody gives anything about what Mr. Lavrov says here in Ukraine. Yeah, Ukrainians aren't willing to give up their own country, are they? DW's Matthias Berlinger reporting from Kiev for us there. Thank you.